So in this episode, we're going to talk about how to add a table to a website. And a table, of course, we can use to show data, information, that kind of stuff to our users. And sometimes a table is just very nice to have on a website instead of, you know, writing out the information. So what we can do here is we can actually go ahead and go into our uh, HTML file because we do actually need a new section for this. So if we go into our front page and go to our video section inside our section tags and copy it because we do need a new section for our table. So we might as well just copy one. Paste it below at the very bottom, right before the section ends. And then simply change the name from, uh, at least the class name from video dash box to table dash box. We're going to keep the wrapper for now. We're going to delete the iframe though, because we don't need the iframe. And then we're going to save it. So now we're going to go ahead and go into our style sheet and style our new table dash box because we do actually need some styling for it. Go to the very bottom right before the footer because in the HTML hierarchy, that's where it goes. And then we change the video to table. Now, instead of the height being fixed, we're just gonna go ahead and delete it, remove it, and add a padding at the very top and bottom instead. So we're gonna write padding. And then we're gonna say from top and bottom, we want 80 pixels. And from the left and right, we want zero pixels. And we did talk about how to do this, like the, the padding, what it does in our uh, what do you call it? Our introduction intro box episode. So we're just going to go ahead and save it and refresh without any further explanation to why we'd add the padding. Now, as you guys can see, we do actually have the same background color as the footer. So we should probably change the background color as well to FFF. Save it, refresh our browser. And as you guys will notice, we get a new section at the very bottom here. Now, now we can actually go ahead and include our table inside this box. So if I go into my index file, go to our wrapper, which is inside our table box div, which is our subsection to our section. We can actually go ahead and write out, oh, at least we need to open up the code, then write table, close it, and then we need to add the closing tag of the table, which is down here at the very bottom, like so. So now we have a table, but we don't actually have anything inside the table. So if you go ahead and add a, well, there's three different things you can put in here. You can put a table header, you can put a table row, or you can put table data in here. So let's go ahead and add a table row because we need a row for the header first. So think about it as the rows going horizontally and depending on the information we put inside these rows, it's gonna add the columns. So we're gonna start out by writing a table row, which we do by opening up the code, writing TR and closing it again. Then we need to add the closing tag of the row, of course, like so, with a backslash, TR, and close it. Then we're gonna shove it down to the next line. So in between the table row, we're gonna add either the table headers or the data. And for this first one, we should probably add some headers, you know, like some titles for each column. So we're gonna go ahead and write TH this time, which is table header, and I just wrote it out quickly. It's the same thing as the table row. And then we're gonna add some information in here. So we're gonna go ahead and say first, name, for example. Then we're gonna add another one. So we're just gonna copy this one below here. Let's go ahead and copy it down twice and say last name. And then we're gonna go ahead and write points. And I'm actually using this example from w3schools.com. So, you know, it's just a very nice example. So let's have first name, last name and points, not name, just points like so. And then we have some different headers. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and add the data for each header. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this entire section with the table row, paste it below here, because we do need to have another row to show a piece of data. And then instead of TH inside, because we don't need the table headers, we're gonna write TD for table data. So I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight them all and write TD instead. So now of course we want some data, we don't want the header text in here. So we want to write my first name, at least my first name, I can use an example. You guys can write whatever kind of data you want. I'm just gonna use my name as an example, Daniel. And then my last name is a very typical Danish name, which is Nielsen. And then the points I get is 100 points because I am just that good. So now that we have one piece of data, we can actually go ahead and copy this one again and add another one because this is just one person, but we need a second person just to kind of see what we're doing. 
So we're going to go ahead and write, I don't know, N-I-C-K-L-A-E-S, which is Nicholas, at least a very complicated way to write Nicholas, which is my brother's name, by the way. And then we're going to go ahead and write another last name for my brother. We're going to write Jackson. If that's how you spell it, that's, I do not think that's how you spell it. That's how you spell it. And because he's my younger brother, of course, he doesn't have as many points as I do. So we're going to go ahead and write 60. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and go and refresh our browser. And you guys may notice that we, even though we do have some information here, it's not very impressive looking because right now our table is actually only the width of the content. And we, as you guys can see, the first name does actually touch the bottom of last name and points and everything looks very tiny. So let's go ahead and make it 100% width of our wrapper. So going into our style sheet at the very bottom here, we're going to go ahead and say, well, we do have a, well, let's just go ahead and, and copy this piece of code up here. We do have a table dash box with a table in it. So we're going to go ahead and after the table dash box say table we want it to look like this. So right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the background color and the padding, and then keep the width at 100%. So after we've done this, refresh our browser, you guys will notice that it spreads out. Now, the thing about headers is that they're always gonna be centered, and the data is always gonna be floating to the left side. So we can actually change this inside our styling if you want to. I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see it even better. and. Let's just go ahead and install each of these individually. If I right click on these and inspect element, which is something you can do in a lot of browsers, uh, you can actually see that I'm highlighting my table data right now, which as you guys can see with the blue area, takes up this much space. If I were to highlight my table header, which is here, it takes up the same amount of space, but the text is just centered. So if I want to change the color of my rows, so that look a little bit different from the headers. We can actually go ahead and go into our style sheet again. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy my styling from a table box table, paste it down here and say inside the table, we also have a table header with a TH. So we don't need to change the width because we already have it at 100%. So now that we have the table header down here, we can actually go ahead and add the styling to make the text go to the left side. Because I do think that the text being in the middle does look kind of weird. So let's just go ahead and add it so that it goes to, le to the left side. So we're gonna say text dash align. Then we're gonna say left. We're gonna save it and refresh our browser. And you guys will notice that our text is going to the left side. It looks better. Now you'll also notice that our headers do actually have a bold styling to it. I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom even more in for you guys so you guys can see it that it does actually have a bit of uh, boldness to it. Now, this is something that just like with, you know, H elements and paragraph elements, like H elements will actually have some boldness to them as a preset. Headers will as well inside a table header. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go ahead and add a bit of background color to the rows so we can actually tell them apart. So going into our styling again, we're gonna go ahead and copy our table box that uh, table box table th paste it below here and then say instead of th we're going to say tr oh sorry td for table data and then we can actually start styling it here so inside our table data instead of the text align left because we don't need that it's already aligned left we're going to say background dash color and then give it something very light so let's go ahead and give it um, hashtag ccc and see how it looks like. So as you guys can see, we do have it highlighted now. So maybe we want some spacing between, at least from the top and bottom. So let's go ahead and add a margin as well. So inside our table data, we're gonna say margin dash top and say maybe two pixels to not exaggerate too much. Refresh it and you guys will notice that nothing does actually happen. Ah, okay. So I did actually figure out what I did wrong here. And I do seem to make a lot of mistakes lately, but let's just go ahead and fix this. Now, when we want to add a spacing to our table data, at least between the rows, we don't add the spacing to the table data, we add it to the table row. So what we can do here is we can actually go ahead and copy our table data styling. We're gonna paste it below our table box up here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and delete our margin from our table data at the bottom here and delete the background color 
at least delete both of these because we don't need both of these inside a, a table row. So we're going to change here to table row. And then we're going to add instead of a margin or a padding because you can't actually do that inside a table. We need to add a border instead. So we're going to say border dash top. And then we're going to say quotation marks or not quotation mark colon. And then we're going to say one. Actually, we're going to say two pixels of border from the top space we want the line to be solid we could also add dash to something depending on what kind of line you want to add right now we're just going to add a solid line and then we're going to say what color we want it to be so i'm going to go ahead and say we want it as white which is hashtag fff if i save this now refresh my browser you guys will notice we get some spacing so this is one way to do things we can actually we can actually also add a what do you call a border around our data down here if we want to because if you go into our table data and we want each data to be defined like right now we just have the spacing between the rows and sometimes you actually want to make you know a box around each data so we would actually go ahead and go down to our data instead of border top we're just going to say border then we're going to delete our border top up here at the table row and i can show you guys that looks a little bit different so now we do actually get a border around each of our data. So we actually get these small cells with information in them. So you can do this in so many ways. And we can actually just go ahead and make it not white, but let's go ahead and make it black just for the fun of it. I'm kind of messing around with my coding a little bit now just to show you guys. So if we make it black instead, you guys will see it even better that we get these boxes. So this is essentially how you do this kind of thing. And and create you know tables and that and that type of thing and you can add all kinds of crazy styling to it you can add all the different styling that you want to add to it now we're just going to leave this for now in this episode we're not going to uh, change the the font you know family or change the font size or anything because you guys already know how to do that just want to show you guys how to make a table inside this website so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode in the next one we're going to talk about how to include a form into a website which is something that you're going to be using quite a lot if you're using PHP code, which is something you guys might consider looking into in the future. And it's just very nice to know about forms because you do see them a lot on websites. For example, if you want to add a little contact form on a website and you want people to be, you know, be able to send a email using that contact form, then it's nice to have a form that you can actually use. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.